This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me as always, halfway across the world, it's Jerry Morgan. Blink, blink, blink. It's early. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, just, just a wee bit early for you, huh? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's all right. I'm off. I've caffeinated. Uh, I think I'll be okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> there, 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 there's a good reason why we uh, uh, have shaken Jared out of his bed at this early time. It's because also joining us is our good friend, Mel Kirk. Hey, guys. Good to be with you again, Jared. Uh, yeah, we've stirred you quite early, my friend. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I will make an exception when we get an opportunity to chat with you because you're a hard person to track down. Yeah, Mel's a bit busy. <laughs> you know, there's stuff going on yeah. in your life, I would imagine. <laughs> Just Moment. a little bit, a little bit. Especially in the holidays. You were just uh, you were just in Budapest, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't remember when I came back. It was sometime this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was just there, and uh, we, we had a, a end-of-year celebration and got to see everybody because that doesn't happen very often in a work-from-home environment and uh, celebrate the year look forward to next year all that kind of stuff so it was it was a nice trip that's awesome and then the team there is uh, i'm sure looking to get a little bit of time off during the holiday too right yeah um most guys are well most of the team is off now uh, i shouldn't just say guys anymore. we actually have a lot of women yeah now, which is cool um so yeah. yeah most of the team uh is off right now and gonna enjoy a holiday and uh there's still work going on but yeah it's it's a time of year where hopefully we can charge our batteries and Get ready for next year. Fantastic. Uh, I'm going to do one bit of maintenance here because uh, I just saw that something that I had not cleared. I saw it too. <laughs> you saw that too, didn't you? But in the meantime. Let me just go. While we're... Blink! Um... <laughs> oh, this is a quick edit. This is a quick edit. Like, and we're then doing I it go, live, but blink! Not live. There we go. Okay, now we're now we're back to, to business. <laughs> right eh? It's been it's been a while since we've had a guest on here. I hadn't cleared the uh, the old uh, cameras of everything. There we go. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, all right. So as is uh, kind of becoming a tradition here with you, uh, you plopping in uh, right at the uh, end of the year, um, after a very busy year of goings on with uh, Zen Pinball, and uh, we kind of uh, like to do a little retrospective of you know call it. What uh, was successful for you guys? What went right? Uh, what are some things that you uh, missed the target on that you were hoping to uh, have done? And what can we look forward to in the next year? And this, obviously, folks, is going to cover also what was addressed in the latest Pinball Show episode. So um, I guess what we're going to do, let, let's start off right the bat. We'll, we'll get the business out of the way there. Uh, Mel, promote away. We're getting consoles finally. Yeah, finally. So I, uh, your, your question about what, what went well and what didn't go well, but we didn't deliver Pinball FX uh, on consoles in 2022, uh, which we were aiming for and we all thought we were going to do, uh, but just uh, didn't happen. But it's happening in February, right? So PlayStation 5 and 4, all the Xboxes at, at one, X, <laughs> all, S, the Xbox. um, <laughs> <laughs> all the current Xboxes. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that's February and then looking further into April, uh, that's what we have targeted for Nintendo switch and, uh, and other platforms. So, uh, that is, that's the lineup right now. What was the, do you think the biggest hang up, uh, just with bringing the consoles, uh, to bear, was it just launching the entire platform itself or was there optimization things or what was kind of the, uh, the sticking point? Well, the game is extremely network heavy. And yeah. our code base started from scratch, uh, you know, leaving PX Engine behind and going into Unreal. Yeah. And our entire back end network system, which powers leaderboards, events, tournaments, anything that, you know, requires pinging to a server, uh, was completely rebuilt. And we actually have um, external technology for that um, through our parent company. And uh, it was a challenge. That team uh, was based in St. Petersburg. And, uh, oh, can't, can't begin to tell you what, what they've been living through and in turn what, you know, uh, ultimately caused us some big delays and uh, and things like that. So yeah. uh, it's a team right. effort, though, um, at the end of the day. And I, 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 that's that's the delay. That that was the huge thing. We were awesome on the content side. Mm -hmm. The, the mm. tables, you saw them coming month after month. Yeah, and no, that was fantastic. Look, look how many tables we shipped. Now it's the platform side that is the delay. But it, it's coming into view. Uh, we are almost done with the platform or feature locked obviously we're coming to consoles so we're there awesome mm. um yeah we kind of forget about uh 
I shouldn't say we forget about it, but the how close uh, Budapest is to all of that with with Russia and the Ukraine and everything that's going on there, and obviously how many partners uh, you know just in Europe general um, for for video content that everybody relies upon. Um, it 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 <laughs> you don't you don't realize how that's all integrated and how something like that would just dis- like disrupt. I'm sure you're not the only studio that's been affected by this. There, there's a lot of studios and a lot of companies affected by this. Um, and, and yeah, you know, the guys in Hungary are a border away, right? Ukraine, they, they share a border with Ukraine. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's been all sorts of, you know, there's just stuff people deal with over there on a daily basis that affects work. And at the end of the day, work doesn't become the most important thing. Yeah. No, so, no uh, we, that sort of you know, stuff. we live through it and we're okay as a company. We understand that we didn't deliver what we thought was going to happen due to unforeseen circumstances. But at the end of the day, like our people are safe and they're good. We grew the studio. Everybody's working well. Um, the game is done when it's done and people are more important. Let's talk about that yeah. uh, growth of studio. Because yeah. you guys were definitely going on a hiring spree. We keep on seeing new tables designed by new designers. Um, where are we at? Uh, I know that you had... Last time we talked to you, I think that you were saying that you were hoping to have, what, 12 designers? The I, Yes, we, we want to have 12 designers, which ultimately means we have, um, like, a designer can do two games a year on average is, is the thought. So we're trying to hit that 25 table year goal. Um, the studio itself grew, we're about 120 people right now. Um, oh my gosh. That's a lot. Yeah, that's, that's a lot more from the 50 people that you used to have when we started talking to you. <laughs> wow, yeah, 50. That's, yeah, wait, that's... wait, was it even 50 or was it even less when we first started talking to Mel? What oh. year was it? <laughs> what... <laughs> it would have been a couple of years ago now. And probably at least four years ago, maybe five. Mm. So I kind of mark it now by that when, when we were acquired by Embracer Group under Saber Interactive, we were 65 at that point. And so Six... it's been almost exactly two years since um, we were acquired and yeah, we've doubled, pretty much doubled the size of the, the company. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that is that is large growth. I wonder, you know, with with Embrace's backing and everything like that and that amount of growth, I remember, you know, you, you know, releasing the console isn't a foreign thing for Zing. You've been doing it for a number of years now, but I just wonder, is it easier to manage the coordination with uh, a company like Embracer and Saber behind you, or is it about the same sort of you know juggling of balls that you would normally expect when you're dealing with all the different console platforms? Uh, it, it's still largely an autonomous culture uh, where we are left to work independently, and so for the pinball side, we are 100% in control of what we want to do with with this game, mm. where we publish and all the all the channels. So it's about the same. Um, okay. we, we manage our own first party relationships on the RPG side, which, you know, we have a whole other kind of side going on. Um, Saber has helped us uh, a lot more there and they've gotten more involved, but on the pinball okay. side, side of things, it's solely us. Hmm. Speaking of the RPG, <laughs> um, cause every time I see a little screenshot of the, uh, I'm not sure exactly of the title. It's a uh, circus. Jade Nautical. No. Or circus electric. Circus electric. I immediately go, well, that looks like a cool pinball table. And I'm like, oh, it's not a pinball table. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and and the fact that like Dreadnautical, we were convinced that we were going to be seeing kind of like what you guys did with Castle Storm. Um, can we expect maybe still that kind of thing maybe in the future that some of your RPGs are going to become pinball? Maybe. We have... The, the, the problem is uh, there's a couple of things. One, we want to give our designers uh, the opportunity to work on what they want and have some decision in what they're doing. Uh, that's really important to us. And then number two, the amount of opportunities we have. And guys, I think I'm a broken record when I tell you our roadmap and the IPs and who we're working with. And I mean, it's like, yeah, should we do Dreadnautical or should we do this? You know, and it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's do that. Um, so sure. We'd love to see, I mean, I think an Operencia, Dreadnautical and Circus Electric table would be awesome, but, hmm. um, but with, with the other priorities. opportunities you have, yeah, priorities. priorities. Um, uh, speaking of, I don't, we didn't get to talk to you, uh, about, uh, World Cup. Um, you would, you talked to us previously about it a, a little bit, um, but maybe you can go into a little bit more now uh, for our audience. Just, uh, you know, the challenges uh, with that table, especially uh, lining up FIFA. It seemed like all of a sudden 
all sorts of things were happening in terms of certain games losing FIFA license, and, and everybody was like, wait, does this mean anything for us? And then, uh, you know, that kind of nature. Uh, just give us a little uh, taste of what went, on, went along with uh, getting World Cup to, to show. I think timing is everything. Uh, FIFA were willing and open to talk to us when we were ready to make the game. And yeah, we were able to secure their marks and license uh, for, the, for the game, which means that the table we put out was 100% authentic. And that was really important to us. Uh, that is really important to us with any of these big third-party games that we're making. We want to try and get them true to form. Um, but it, like I said, with, with FIFA, I think it was timing. Uh, for years and years, they had the exclusive with EA. I have no visibility into why that didn't continue. But look, for us, <laughs> it was it was good it news. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look a gift horse in the mouth, as they say. <laughs> yeah. Just sign the paperwork. That's right. what you do. <laughs> it, yeah, it wasn't cheap, but... Uh, but we were willing, you know, that that's just what it takes. So yeah. you still managed to get it below that that sweet mark though of, you know, the, the sort of ten dollars mark. You know, we're we're not talking another Indiana Jones price here. So, you know, I think people expected that, you know, FIFA oh, yeah. ain't cheap. <laughs> so, you know, and the, the table is just compared to if you look at the that table compared with the the Farsight version, it's a different beast altogether. Like it plays so much differently. Oh, it plays completely it's, differently. Yeah, it's just it's so much more lively and so much more true to form. I've got one of those tables around this area that I live in, mm -hmm. and playing that one and playing the one that's actually on site, uh, it's pretty much close to where it is. You know, close when I say that, it's like well, you know, no pinball machine is the same, <laughs> but it's definitely reflective of the game. That's for sure. Well, good. I'm, I'm glad that you're enjoying it. Uh, you know, we think that we've elevated these games uh, above previous versions of them, uh, you know, that existed digitally. Part yeah. of that is we're in a different engine, so we have more graphical horsepower. Mm -hmm. um, but we think that our simulation is by far the best in the world. Nobody's even coming close to us, uh, even what, with what happened previously. That's just because we continue to work on it and invest in it and try to improve, you know, and uh so i'm glad that it's showing through i think also that our enhanced version or remake version and whatever you want to call it um i think that we we had it was tastefully done i think that we've really kind of uh honed in on how to do it tastefully and uh we are seeing that people 98 uh, percent of people who play the williams games do play the enhanced version so it's oh, worthwhile wow. doing mm. 98%. Now, is that is that across all Williams or just across for... all the Williams games? It, Interesting. Wow. Yeah. wow. Like at collective as, as a whole, 98% of our players who buy Williams and play Williams yeah. will play it in the enhanced version. They also, they will play it in the other one, but they at least they, they'll they'll toggle on and they'll play it. And I'm, I'm not going to reveal the play times, but it'll, it'll it would shock you how much time is spent with the enhanced version. And wow. so we think that it's been a good addition, and it kind of allowed Zen to put our you know these are. We love these games, but it, this is like our little moment that we can have with them as well. And I, think I think there's certainly a learning curve uh, with how you guys were doing enhancements because mm -hmm. it seems like with each table, the, like you said, that taste level that you're using and, and how, uh, I'm not going to say intrusive, but how uh, at the forefront it is has found a very nice sweet spot where it's not um, uh, not like, ah, I got to turn that off because it's just like, ah, it's ruining for me, you know, kind of thing. So. That's right. Like the disappearing ball in Theater of Magic, you know, <laughs> the outline. Yeah, that's, that doesn't mean necessarily mean. <laughs> that, that, that's quite tricky. But yeah, the the integration and the balance, I feel, is just getting better and better with the enhancement. So it's good. It's interesting to hear the statistics back that up. Yeah, which well. I think kind of leads nicely into uh, the next big thing, uh, which mm. would be Adam's family. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> non-trivial. <laughs> there, there were certain aspects that when I when I watched the video, that the first thought to me was was, oh wow, that's really nice. They got that detail on the table, and then I went, wait, that's an enhancement. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the one that like caught my eye was the on top of the thing box. You actually have like an engraving on the box that says thing, and I think that for some reason I thought that. That was just part that was of it. just a thing. It just that's how good it looked, and just like seamless it was for me. So, um, Adam's family, yes. Let's let's get into that. Um, we already all know the deal with Christopher Lloyd, um, mm -hmm. and so we don't need to hash that. But no, 
the the festering of fester as we like to call it <laughs> um <laughs> the the image that i saw in your video i feel like i'm gonna have to really hold it side by side with the actual one to go oh there's where the changes are because it looked pretty legit to me uh yeah and if we want to talk about it we might need to bring up some images just so i i can see but it really all that happened you know fester's on the art on on the back glass and on the play field yeah mm. So he's just missing. That's that's the only difference between the original and what we've done. But you have and an actual. There's an actual fester head down at the at the the drain hole in the videos that you guys showed. Um, on your table because it's a big fester head with the light bulb in his mouth right there at the uh, at the at the flipper. Okay. On the bottom. So that might be that is probably able to be left in the that because that's. There's some tricky things. I have to go back and look at uh, how it was done and what the what we were permitted to use and not use. But the the likeness images of him and his full character are the things that are missing. Oh, on the back yeah. glass itself. Okay, on the back that glass. Makes sense. The high detail images. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think when Farsight had to had the same problem. Oh yeah. The the adjustments they needed to make on the play field were minor. It was almost like the. The, the twenty percent thing <laughs> with plagiarism. Not that this is a plagiarism thing, but it's sort of like it wasn't a lot of adjustment. Well, the, the, to actually, I mean, get, the truth be told, the it's already a cartoon image. It's not yeah, a Photoshop. It's stylized. It's stylized already. So mm. the removal of certain you know bags under the eyes or adding in a you know shadow on the cheek, it's so stylized anyway. I always just kind of went as if you could mm. tell that was Christopher Lloyd to begin with. You know, it's it's yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So well, these, are, these are some of the challenges with with these games uh indie was sort of the same way you know mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of speculation and even if you look all the way back people are like is that really harrison ford you know because it's the way it's right. drawn and, and the way it looks so we mm -hmm. always play on the on the safe side i'm not going to assume oh that's no not that's not christopher lloyd yeah. you know what i mean like come on so well that's what that's <laughs> you that's where our, ask. <laughs> yeah that's, that's where our argument with uh the shadow um yes baldwin's not on that table the back glass image is not Alec Baldwin. And you put up a side-by-side -side image of the poster and that back glass, it's not even close to the same person, yeah. but everybody just assumes it's him because, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, he started the movie and that's the... So it's like, wow, the licensing on that has got significantly easier. <laughs> there are other games we're working on right now where this is the conversation I'm having with several different companies, right? All at the same time about different people. So right. it's really funny... <laughs> <laughs> but it's a challenge. Yeah, yeah, this is something that we work through with each of these games. Ah, the fun with licensing. Um, mm. The licensing with obviously the rest of everybody. Did you find that that uh, flowed together better now that you'd already partnered with uh, Paramount for World War Z? Um, maybe because these things had already been recently done when Farsight uh, put together packages. Uh, did it kind of come together easily for you, or was it kind of gnashing and pulling teeth like it was with Indie? Uh, I'd say it, it's getting easier. Uh, the challenge is always music and likeness, yeah. right? Usually getting a license uh, grant is uh, for Zen now is easy. Okay. Mm. Th there's no challenge, but figuring out the, the licensing particulars, as we call them, is always a challenge, no matter how many times you work together with a company, because um, individuals are different, uh, estates are different, and music licensing is always challenging, especially... We're talking about old music or synthesized music, different versions of music from the original. Right. Do you need a publish? Do you need a sync? Do you need both? Do you, do we not need any? Because this music actually isn't really. It's just based. On, it's it's a sound alike, but it's too much of a sound alike. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. Yeah. 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 Music. <laughs> yeah. It's it's that snap snap. That's all it is. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, with with. Adam's family, obviously, there's the standard version that uh, most people have played, and then there's the gold uh, collector's edition that also came out later with a slightly different uh, uh, ROM Rule set. set. Um, are, is that kind of also a plan to do both ROM sets, or is it just going to be purely the uh, the base model? Uh, stay tuned to January. I don't want to no. steal my, my marketing team's thunder. They've got something, <laughs> really, they've got something really fun planned. Okay. So stay tuned. I was going to say, <laughs> uh, is there anything... 
Oh, I had a feeling there might be things left on the table that perhaps were like surprises planned. So, yeah, yeah, that was my next question, and it sounds like yes, <laughs> they had some time to work on something. I think it's it's really fun and really cool. Uh, we never know how things will be accepted, you know, yeah. but um, they mm. they've, they've been trying to do. They're working on something really fun. So, I'm awesome. I'm also very curious to see what you guys do with the actual thing. Uh, lights in this regard for people that aren't playing with a back glass because that's obviously where those lights lived. Um, yeah. Just kind of seeing what the workaround is that uh, we do for that with this. Um, oh, what was the other thing I was going to ask about Adam's family? I don't know. Slipped my mind. You got anything else to ask about Adam's family? Oh, I know what it was. Uh, did you guys mention the price? We did. Yeah, uh, it's a nine ninety nine. It's nine ninety nine. Okay, so yeah. once again into that sweet spot there. Mm. Seems fair enough. Okay. Um, Jared, you pick the next topic. Um, let's go with um, platform releases. So we we know that you know you're going full steam ahead with consoles. They're going to land um, around February. Um, I was curious about. I mean, we we know that for PC at the moment it's still um, Epic Games. Um, in the announcement, I didn't see a lot about Steam, and I know there's a fair few people out there that are still interested in running the platform, running the game on Steam. Is that a future platform, or is that not really something that's going to be targeted for PC? So I don't have anything to confirm regarding Steam at this point. Uh, I'll just say okay. that historically we've supported Steam, so um, mm. you know you can read into that as whatever you like. Mm -hmm. That's Fair probably enough. enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay and I, I i guess flowing on for that as well um the the other platforms that are floating around out there as well being mobile platforms um i would imagine that while unreal is you know cross-platform um trying to work out the 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 horrific landscape of ios not so much ios but android is probably even harder than Switch, trying to get things optimized and stuff like that. So I'd imagine it'd be fair to say we're probably going to be waiting a while to see the game on mobile platforms. So I'm, I'm not completely up to date as to where we are with chipsets for uh, the newest mobile devices, but I can tell you I know uh, that some mobile devices are more powerful than the Switch itself. Mm. Uh, Android is a, is a tough landscape because yep. it's supporting so many different chipsets. Uh, but the new Qualcomm and the Snapdragon stuff are pretty powerful. I've got this little Asus notebook over here that um, Qualcomm sent me, and it's running PFX in its current state on Epic Game Store, which is pretty crazy. Wow, well, that's, that's wild. <laughs> and that's that's what's powering a lot of um, of the new uh, Android devices. And yep. then on iOS, um, the, the the new phones and iPads are amazingly powerful. Um, so. I, I think mobile, uh, you know, call it within the last two years generation, maybe last year, definitely capable of running POFX. And That's interesting. I think that um, we'll we'll be making announcements about it at some point. Is it? That's really good news. Yeah. Is it is it fair to say that uh, doing optimization for the Nintendo Switch would also fall in line for doing optimization for future VR releases? Optimization for Switch is different than what we do for VR. Um, mm. Switch really lives in its own little space. It is the most underpowered little device that we want to support. Um, and so we try to get there with everything. We get huge gains for everything else when we do that work. Uh, you'll see big gains on PC. The min spec is going to mm. be coming down for the final release. Um, it may, you know, it'll get even better. Um, it, we've seen that happen already just with Xbox and PlayStation. VR is, is a different set of, it's a different animal. We have to create different assets and we have to scale them differently. And uh, you might see PFX um, has taken some cues from Star Wars Pinball VR and in this kind of mm. pinhole setup that we have in this room. So, um, you know, being forward thinking and thinking about how, you know, how, do we really want pinball effects and then a separate VR game? That's not what we're going after this time. So, oh, that's good. You know, yeah, I would love it. Oh, VR is not their day one, but. Maybe day 100, mm. you know, maybe yeah. day, maybe day 150, like, you know, so that, that's, yeah. that's the idea. Yeah. I was gonna say, I think me and Jared are both firmly coming to the camp of, oh, it'd be so great if, I mean, you already integrated that, the, the, that cave aspect from Star Wars into this. Um, yeah. To have it all just be a solitary, Hey, if you want to throw on your VR headset, it's the exact same thing. 
that you already have. Yeah. Everything's already saved. Oh, I don't want to play VR. Take it off. Do the other. Um, I think that's why we were even uh, kind of arguing with when playing a Williams table that I just want it in the man cave. I don't want the Williams environment to all of a sudden yeah, take me exactly. out of it. I want to just be in that same environment the entire time. Um, but that's that's good that you guys are at least thinking in that direction uh, for, mm. for when VR does. Imagine its head. VR is kind of the same situation as, you know, Android chipsets because it is, you know, if you're looking at the MetaQuest, it is a Android Android based platform. So um, I'd imagine that it is probably a similar boat to switch in that it is quite bespoke and you need to then look at performance on that as well um, for a native VR experience if you want it on like the, the MetaQuest store um, or you know, ideally, if you have it through AirLink and you're playing it through your PC on VR, that's the other way that a lot of people are going now or cabled. Um, but if you want it to have like a standalone release, then you probably need to then reconsider how performance looks on the platform itself. Because, you know, playing Star Wars VR versus on the native MetaQuest experience versus the PC Quest experience is a very different experience. There's, you know, clear sacrifices that need to be made because of the the VR Qualcomm chipset that's in the Quest 2. So I'd imagine similar performance things need to be entertained when you're looking at that sort of um, release for VR. Yes, that, that's true. But I, the, I think the point I was trying to make or make whatever is just that there's, there's different assets that we have to optimize. You know, we do a lot with 3D mm. characters just being next to you and, and as part of the yes. environment. And things like that. So in order to do that, that's a certain type of work and the optimization that goes with that is pretty heavy lifting. Um, yeah. Cause those are big things to render <laughs> those things that stand next to you in the oh, game. Yeah. <laughs> they are Java's right there, man. He's at, yeah. He's, you know, he's at scale. So lots yeah. of polys thrown around <laughs> uh, along with that. And then you're actually rendering the table as well. So yeah, there's a lot of extra overhead with the VR sort of experience. Yeah. It's very interesting. Uh, let's shift into the other major uh, announcement there was with the regards to uh, payments for all these things. The ticket system mm. is going away. Um, I know that there's a lot of people that are happy about that, but I also think there are still holdovers from when you first introduced the ticket system and didn't realize how much has changed in the interim. <laughs> and now mm. I wonder if people have shot themselves in the foot because that pretty much is the death knell for being able to do cross-platform uh, purchase once, play anywhere, unless you're doing pinball pass. Uh, yeah, that, that that's correct. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we pivoted away from the ticket system, and we're going back to just having um, games available via the stores for fiat money or real money, um, no longer for virtual currency. And it does take away, um, well, we had a lot of gains and a lot of advantages that we found with that system that we were going for. Uh, you can still have cross commerce, like you mentioned through Pinball Pass, if you subscribe and you can play the, the tables wherever uh, wherever you wanna play. But at the end of the day, it just seemed the overwhelming feedback, um, even personal emails or communications I was getting from press, from influencers, from people, was just that they, that they hated tickets. They thought it was predatory. I understand the thing with the ticket balances, but as we were building the system through where you were getting bulk discounts and, and bundles that you wanted to purchase, you know, I think it kind of showed that we couldn't do it the same across the board. Um, and so it was hard to, to say that, yeah, you're gonna have a zero ticket balance, but uh, mm. it just, it wasn't enough. We didn't communicate it properly. It got off to a terrible start. Um, it was, it was probably DOA the, the way we put it out anyway, mm. we just couldn't win, win people over. So, Hey, that's fine. But um, the cross commerce is still there through pinball pass. So, uh, you know, some people like are telling me that um, I, I was promising something that didn't get delivered and that it was just because we couldn't do cross commerce and we pivoted away. Well, let me tell you, um, the very last moment to try to make to do this right and to figure out the long term success of the game, we felt like this was the right move and cross commerce is in fact there with pinball pass. So mm. it's just not the, you know, cross buy with tables. Right. Um, so does, does that mean we're going to go back to uh different platforms having sales on tables at different times. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. 
And then obviously, as uh, I know that you mentioned, uh, and this goes into the whole, anytime you submit a game, it's got to go through that platform's quality assurance, make sure it's functioning. So it adds, you know, weeks <laughs> to release and timing. So it's also going to mean that we're no longer going to have month to month releases, but instead uh, package releases. Package releases uh, every two months uh, is the fastest we'll be able to do it just because you can't have multiple submissions stacked on top of each other in Sony's FQA or at, with Xbox. It's got to clear before you can put it out um, because we're publishing to their store again and no longer just to end game. So that adds mm -hmm. publishing overhead and time to release. Uh, we also will not be releasing individual tables because um, again, that that's multiple, like all the submissions would just get backed up, stuck on top of each other. So if we can package things together, like sets of three or sets of two or big collections where we have tables of, you know, seasonal stuff, uh, that's what'll be on the store. Um, I thought it was really cool that people could just pick which table they wanted to buy. If we put a three pack out and they're only one interested them, then they just, you know, get the one. It was uh, great. So. Yeah, it was really, really good. So basically, you know, Adam's family will be the last single table purchase um, for the foreseeable future. No, we, we have other uh, tables that are coming from oh, okay. new, new licensors where we just made one table. It was a game that we just really wanted to make, and so we made it together, and that's the only the only one. You know? Oh, okay. okay. Um, My Little Pony also, for example, right? So it's on its, There's not a pack of My Little Pony, so that'll be like by itself. But right. Star Wars is going to have pack. Marvel... Williams, um, Zen Originals, these things where we have multiple games, uh, you know, Bethesda will become a packet again, or I know it's not out yet in early access, but those things that were all individually broken up are going to be grouped back together. It makes me wonder as well, The I really did enjoy being able to sort of make your own pricing in the past, like you were suggesting. It, it was really nice as a, a person coming in and wanting to build up their collection again in the platform to see all the different tiers laid out really transparently. But now with the move back to DLC, um, is it going to be the case where you're going to try and roll in a a bit of a, a table pack discount like I assume you were doing before with like applying a flat rate discount across a pack and then offering it for a, a price? Um, was that how it worked before or is it different now? I'm I'm not sure exactly if I'm understanding your question, but yeah, sorry, that was a bit weird. I need more coffee. Um, <laughs> what we will, so what, what I'm we saying, are doing, what we are doing is offering those day one legacy discounts for any of the, the games that are coming, you know, that existed before in Pinball FX three. Those yeah. sorry, the dog is greeting somebody at the door, <laughs> as um, he should. Yeah. Yes, uh, th we're still going to offer those discounts at the store level um, for okay. like the week. But if we wanted to leave that on for just say an extra week or something on our own, we, we can't do that anymore. Right. Um, uh, if we want to run a sale, we have to be part of a curated sale or have a good enough relationship with first parties where we can just put stuff on sale. Like right now in um, uh, early access on the Epic Game Store, we can just put things on sale whenever we want. Uh, we, mm. Hey. Let's do a Back to the Future Day sale, and you know because it's just it's, uh, it's what is like it? October twenty first, right? And have an event yeah. timed with it, and do something really fun and in game reward and all this stuff. Like we're losing the ability to, to do this to coordinate the sale, mm -hmm. so uh, that's a bummer. Yeah. The people that have uh, purchased tickets uh, already and have an excess of tickets. Uh, I'm sure that you can't go into it, but you did say that you'll be have something in plan to uh, make it right by them. Uh, did I not hear that correctly, or is that yes? No, that's absolutely correct, and this is very, very important to us because um, there were a large number of people who supported us um, in early access, and uh, we are. I believe it's on Monday. I'm not sure what you know when uh, this is running, but sometime very soon, uh, as early as next week, um, we'll put out some official communication about how that will work. Great. and uh, what players can expect and uh, we've already worked out a little bit of a process i actually uh paypal'd somebody some money because uh, they were so upset so <laughs> uh, <laughs> whatever it takes uh you know we understand it's been confusing and we've uh you know we go this way then we go that way and now we're here back to square one really <laughs> so um yeah. if, if you if you came on board with us and you were buying into everything that we were offering uh no question we we want to not leave you with extra tickets 
and we make sure that you get the games on uh, your preferred platform of choice. Uh, so now that you've got the platforms done, you had mentioned, uh, guy, this was a good six months ago, that you're putting cabinet mode on hold to get the consoles ready, up and running. So obviously that's a thing. Uh, so I know in the show you mentioned cabinet modes coming back, um, and not just for PC, but that you're looking at making it work with uh, the consoles also, which I think is a fantastic idea. Um, mm -hmm. In the background, I had seen the cab that Ake Ocean uh, Lynn had done, and I noticed there was two flipper buttons <laughs> holes drilled. Um, yes, this is uh, me getting nerdy on what I want in my cabinet mode, but um, <laughs> I take it that some of the things that they've wound up building uh, have maybe affected what the uh, roadmap for putting the cabinet together mode for all of us together is. Absolutely. And it was really important, um, you know, that we build our own machine because we just wanted to know at the DIY level uh, what users were experiencing. We'd never done that before. I mean, yeah. We were just turning on features and taking feedback and sometimes looking at video. But um, yeah, we actually, you know, Akush and Lena built that and our teams like spent time just understanding the process and just getting really intimate with it. Um, and cabinet mode is so important to us that uh, at one of the things that we were just, we just finalized when I was in, in Budapest last week was we now have a dedicated hardware support team for cabinets. Oh, and wow. this, this is going to be a big focus for us going forward. Uh, DIY support, uh, we have multiple manufacturers, uh, you know, uh, lined up that we're working with, uh, the, the public unit that can live in, you know, that we showed off years ago, but then got derailed by COVID and pandemic. Um, that's all, man, it's going to be big, big, big focus going forward. Ooh, exciting things to think about. <laughs> yeah. So that was the question I had. And again, the level of detail you can go into isn't probably that great, but are we going to see something like not it's not specifically, but something like the arcade, the one up arcade physical cabinet that's a commercial product that people can buy and have in their homes, essentially. So the commercial products, uh, I think that there's no reason why somebody wouldn't be able to buy one. If you want to, if you want to have a machine of that caliber and that quality, uh, yeah, there'll be a way for you to buy it. And we are awesome. we have interest. Uh, got really like celeb celebrities. <laughs> Right. I don't want to say that. I'll be like, man, can I get one of those in like my house? You know? Well, yeah, yeah. Just give, just wait a second. Um, we'll get it for you. <laughs> but um, yeah, they're, they're show pieces. They, they, it looks really cool. The game is all LED lit and wrapped and it, it's going to change based on what you're playing. So one minute you got Jurassic Park dinosaurs marching around then you got TIE fighters flying around it, you know? So um, yeah. it's, just, it's dynamic. It's cool. It's fun. It is the ultimate luxury virtual pin. So uh, that. Can't wait to, to make them a little more uh, widely available. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jared, you had, uh, had a question regarding uh, content. Some of the things, uh, Zen Original things that have uh, been kicking about. Yeah. So um, I think there's a few, I mean, we know that there's a, a really long runway for content coming out in 20, 2023 and beyond uh <laughs> you've already mentioned that there's a there's too many people to actually make tables for um but one thing i was curious about um from a content perspective is there going to be are we going to see things like world cup soccer 94 and a tie-in with events coming out in 2023 is it going to be some sort of alignment with big things that are happening in 2023 with the content that's the goal we have moments put together where we think that that's going to align and we'd love to be trending, right? We'd love to mm -hmm. launch alongside something. We're, we're probably not going to be the, the show, but we can be complimentary. We can, you know, have something where this game is coming. It's intersecting some big, cool, fun thing that's happening. People can get excited, play together, uh, and we can be a part of it. Yes. That's, that's really good. And I'm trying to, th trying to do the math, math in my head about releases. So let's say, Every two months, three three tables approximately every two months. That's like, oh, help me here. <laughs> it's too early in the morning. Well, he what just we said that he was, the goal was 25 a year, right? 25, and that's still the goal. 
that that's the goal we're getting close um mm. if i pull up a spreadsheet i can just i can count for you the number of brand new tables that are releasing in 23 i won't brand. tell you what they all are but <laughs> but right so there's like brand new is in not uh, recreations of williams but just brand new licenses to zen well some of those are brand new to zen some of them are licenses but um so so one two three Right now, Four, somebody's five, trying to magnify six, in and get a reflection shot of Mel's eyeballs. Seven, eight, <laughs> nine, 10, 11, Don't worry, the resolution 12, isn't 15, that good. 14, 15, <laughs> no. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. There will be 24. And if all goes well, and look, our publishing pipeline was super secure with the way that we were releasing content directly in game and, and being able to bypass uh, the store fronts. first parties. But mm-hmm. if all goes the way that we we have it planned and what is sitting in my spreadsheet right now, it is our our plan. There's there's 24 tables that do not exist um, in Zen's pinball library right now that will release next year. Wow, and that's a lot. That and I think lot. we have to like you have to be realistic about this. Like that's essentially a year, so things can just happen. And this was the case with console. You said, oh yeah, absolutely, console is going to be coming out in December. But, you know, <laughs> years happen. So it'd be nice, but we would understand if it doesn't quite go to playing because that's a, a hard-to-predict thing, target. Well, I'll tell you that right now, right, where we're sitting right here December 17th, the way that this would all work, the stuff that's mm. locked in for February all the way to April is already actually queued Submitted. up, right? So we're talking yeah. about the back half of the year, um, call mm. it, that is maybe at risk, but... Uh, we'll we'll know really soon. So at least half of that is already accounted for and very very solid. There's also one table that we're bringing back that it, that everyone's been asking for um, that that has been missing for a while. So that'll be a nice surprise. Oh, that's that not that's not included in the 24. All oh, right. Okay. Mm. That's extra. Mm-mm. Mm. Very nice. <laughs> Which one do we, we want, Jared? Oh well. Not that we didn't just do an episode uh, about Super League or anything. Uh, yeah, no, no, not at all. <laughs> where we where we broke down what changes we would make to the table. Um... <laughs> I actually had one more question yeah. as well, and this was just probably a thanks. Actually, um, the public roadmap smell they were really nice to see oh, this yeah. year, and they're risky, right? Because they're almost like a promise, but mm-hmm. you know you have to be realistic and say that more of a guidepost is is that something is that level of transparency out of early access something that zen wants to continue with yeah uh we will and you know we've adjusted our roadmap now so that tables are finishing earlier and we have more time to know exactly well this this was the thing that was happening in early access was the game would be done and we could actually sit on it for 60 days Mm. and prepare good marketing assets and know without a shadow of a doubt it was coming out on a certain day and then we can put that roadmap graphic up and with with full surety yeah um so again we have some adjustment right now and we'll see uh you know how it goes with with um going back through traditional publishing but it the roadmap is still set up where we're building an extra buffer time so that we can properly communicate um that's one of the things that we really learned is don't we have been in this like i don't know hamster race on the on the wheel where we're oh it's done it's ready get it out the door you know and it's like no pause a little bit and give us ourselves a little runway to communicate whatever it is we're working on yeah absolutely uh no, the great. format of the pinball show has obviously uh, also gotten a, a a tweaking um making it a lot more focused i would say uh mm. how has that uh, gone over you know internally with your numbers of viewership uh just that nature uh, it's it's gone well. When we started the whole thing, um, it, it was funny because I mean, we had no idea what we were doing. We're like game developers, and we're like, "Oh, let's also be entertainers and make a show." Um, <laughs> you know, it was you know, it, what happened was uh, like traditional press has been shrinking. All right, there's just not as many outlets. So we found we were just we weren't getting coverage. We would announce something and and nobody would know about it. So we just said. Well, let's try to take this thing, you know, internal and and make it uh, something that's fun and engaging and and get our news out there in a format that will hopefully pe- interest people. And so that's what the pinball show, the original idea was. Of course, it, it's morphed. It's we've had our ups and we've had our downs and 
had some mm. some blunders and we've had we've had some good times um but ultimately um yeah you're right i think it's become more focused and i think um you know yeah it, 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 it's it's good it's fun it served a purpose uh for sure and we'll see i think uh whatever the team wants to do with it in the future um is great i'm actually um you'll probably still see me in the show but um i'm I just don't have time in, to be in the marketing side of things really at all anymore. And, and they tell me, Hey, we need you to show up and talk. Uh, and you know, uh, we think it's going to be in two months. And so we, we schedule myself, but I'm doing, I'm not, I'm not involved in those day to day anymore. Yeah. But, yeah. Cause at one point you were actually directly involved in producing the show, weren't you? Like there was like, I saw your name on the credits, I think at one point. Yeah. Were, yeah. Yeah. I helped get it started and, uh, I, I was doing some writing and, uh, just mm. helping organize and putting the outline together. Then how do we fill in all the details? But now, uh, the, the team is taking that and, um, uh, they're doing it. I love what they did with the, with the Adams family, that little, that stinger gave it away, but I thought it got everybody talking about it. Yeah. So, it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool. You know, just to be creative like that and they're having fun with it. Um, I'm, you know, that's, that's what you want to be doing is just having fun. So yeah. Yeah. Happens to be yeah fun. Really? I've got to say that the short and sharp, um, sort of reboot of the show is just for me really hitting it. Like I just I can easily dedicate five minutes to learn about new stuff. It's just you know I think that sort of speaks to a lot of the stuff. We're probably an outlier in the way we do our show here, and that it's it's long. But you know the the trend seems to be that the shorter the better, the di more digestible the better. So I think you know keeping it short and sweet is great. Um. um Obviously, you just mentioned that there's a whole bunch of, uh, uh, in the pipeline, new to Zen. Um, let's give people things to speculate about, and that would be on the Williams front, because obviously they can guess titles <laughs> of mm. Williams and Bally uh, tables that have uh, been out there. Um, there's still uh, a few that have not come over uh, yet from the old batch. Um, uh and then there's also, you know, the heavily licensed ones. And then obviously you guys start dipping your toes into those system 11s. Um, has there been anything that, uh, I know that at one point there's a couple of tables that were elusive uh, just because they're hard to come by in Europe. Um, how's that been coming along? Is there any tables that uh, you guys are looking forward to? Obviously not asking you to mention them, but <laughs> that you're looking forward to. You're like, oh my gosh, this is so cool that we got this. I'm, I'm really excited that uh, we're going to get to recreate that. Yeah, well, including Adam's family, uh, next year there should be three other really big Williams games uh, that I think people would be very excited to um, have in their collections. Uh, there's a few other, there, there's others that have been hard to get, but we made progress and we've got them. Then there's some that are still being worked on in the licensing side, which are really, really hard and have never been released digitally. So you can, you can, we all know what those are. Um, games mm. like the shadow and Congo and stuff yeah. like that. Um, mm. These are challenges. They're, they're big challenges. And there's some that I'm, I don't know. I, I thought I saw it all with, uh, with Indy, but there's others where um, there's just questions. And if people, I, I can't just, you know, move forward uh, without an answer. The way we work here at Zen, we cannot risk uh, making a, a wrong move and in, in, um, yeah. losing something on license. No so, way. That's too risky. Yeah. So, it, sorry, I just hit my mic. Um, if we can do mm. it, and there are games, those games we want to we want to get out the ones that have never been done before. Like those, those are just great opportunities, and we hope that we can make those available. Yeah, cool, cool. Yes. Uh, what else do we want? Is there anything else we need to uh, attack here, Jerry? Yeah. yeah. Look, we we've been following pretty closely all of the pinball effects Zen originals that, we, that have been released throughout the um the last year and we've noticed that some are hitting harder than others from the perspective of uh, we call it pinball tropes so the the things that as a player you expect to see in you know the, the sort of more commercial games like stern titles and the older belly williams titles things like design cues where you have you know let's say for the um, the after you launch the ball, the rollers at the top will give you a bonus multiplier. And in the case of Zen tables, what often happens is the return lanes and out lanes will give you kickbacks. But with the new designers coming through, we've noticed that some of these tropes aren't actually being sort of consistently 
developed through the different releases. So in the case of, well, just recently, the, um, the, Elder, the Elder Gods, Gods. release, we did a, a Let's Play of that, of like a first impressions of it, and we noticed that we had to revert back to the actual rules of the game to get some of these design cues and gameplay cues. And we're wondering, is there... Well, we know that there's a... Obviously, Zen has a DNA when they're developing a table. Um, but is there... <sighs> Is there a plan to sort of make things like the real basics of the game, the fundamentals of the game, more consistent across titles in 2023? Um, that's a good question. Uh, and to be honest with you, I'm I'm not in touch at, at that level. Like we might want to bring mm. Deep. You guys might want to talk to Deep. You know, at this point, yeah. Um, maybe we should have you guys do a sit down with him. Love it. Yeah, um, that'd be really good. Because I'm not I'm not so close to like a theme will come across and we're all talking about it. Is this a theme that we think is good? Um, are, right. are there exciting moments? Uh, what are the key gameplay aspects? Like how are we going to wow people? But then after that, it goes in, in, into like the rule sets and the real design of the table itself. I actually, I, I again, things that I'm involved with um, now, with the, the way the company runs, I'm not in the, the day to day. Yeah. Yeah. Design of a, of a game anymore. Um, so when I play it, sometimes it's like already, it, it's just, the, it's the pre-release version. Like, it's a uh, it's beta, you know, or it might even yeah. be the ZBR, the ZBR milestone. So, uh, and there's so many in, in the works. I mean, uh, that we have, it's changed, guys. It's like, there's, so I don't know. Let's uh, we should ask Deep about that. Absolutely, yeah, it'd be great. That'd be awesome. Yeah, we can ask a those different conversation with Deep. With Deep. <laughs> mm, yeah, deep conversation with Deep. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's there's a good the one. title. There we go. <laughs> conversation, a deep Done. conversation with Deep. That's right. Yeah. Nice. All right. Uh, Look, but I can't he, see any of the questions. I, I have to give Deep some credit because I mean, he's he's like our, you know, um, we're trying to we what we should have been doing all along, is like like see the designer make. And we started doing that with Gary, right? Gary came out of uh, customer service, and he's now a pinball designer. You know, he worked his way up yeah. to that. But uh, with Wrath of the Elder Gods, it was cool. It was like we need to start painting the names of people just like the famous uh, designers, right? Yes, like the George yeah, Gomez absolutely. And, the, and, and, and the Lawlers of the world and all that. So Deep is a prolific pinball designer and he's amazing and uh, he mm. should get his credit, you know? So he's one of the greats. Yeah, absolutely. Like uh, all the designers, they put so much effort and time into, I mean, making pinball machines is hard. <laughs> and even if it's digital, it doesn't matter. It's well, still the, a similar amount of effort. I was going to say, that's why I love the fact that you guys uh, do what the pinball, the real team pinball tables do, which is, you know, put the designers and, uh, you know, your credits basically mm -hmm. there in the, uh, in the outline. Um, and we noticed we, when we were playing Super League, I went down. I was like, hey, there's no names there. We don't know who. <laughs> we can't look quickly to see who did this. Um, and then in the case of, uh, uh, in the case of Grimm, uh, the, the little booklet covered up the names and there was no way to see them. And we're like, no, <laughs> that's sad. <laughs> They're there, but I can't get the angle to see what the names are. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's good that uh, the credit's going where credit is due. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No. All right. Well, uh, Mel, you've been very generous with your time. Once again, we, uh, we always love having these talks with you uh, seemingly twice a year, it seems like, uh, <laughs> how it mm. works, which is fantastic for us. We love it. Awesome. Um, Looking forward to uh, what you have in store with this next year. Obviously, that's a lot of tables coming down the pipe, and uh, I can't wait for the console people to get their hands on on these. Those that have been uh, holding out this entire year in jealous Whoa. rage, wanting to uh, to play all these titles. So, um, let me just say this: you're in for a treat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's going to be. I'm, yeah, guy. Just I'm just trying to think. Brand new titles that came out this past year. Uh, that weren't available in FX3. We're looking at at least a dozen, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. I can look at my year. Uh, so Indiana Jones, right? Yeah. Yep. Mandalorian, Classic Collectibles, mm -hmm. World War Z. Um, we teased King Kong, right? Monsterverse and Legendary. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Swords of Fury. Yeah. Ride of Pinbot, mm -hmm. Grim Tales, which is, is an original, of course. Uh, oh, and you, we also had, uh, we have Noir, we had... Um, Sky Pirates. Sky Pirates and Mummy. Mummy. Okay. Then we had Homeworld, 
with our friends over at Gearbox. Yeah. Yes. Um, we had World Cup, officially licensed with FIFA, mm -hmm. and then Wrath of the Elder Gods. Yeah. So those were the brand new, and then we then we we brought over those Zen Pinball Party games, right? right? So yeah, CB so and DreamWorks. Um, is yeah. that five? Yeah. So that's more. seventeen. That's seventeen new tables right off the top. Yeah. For for console that weren't players. in the original package. How yeah. many years ago did I tell you that we weren't giving up on pinball? <laughs> 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 All I know is when you said you had a 10-year plan, this is pretty much going, you know what? They do have a 10-year plan. How they, about they, that? <laughs> they've got an idea of what's going on yeah. here. You know, who would have thought? Not All really. right. Uh, well, cool. Um, like I said, that's that's <laughs> going to be awesome to see what everybody's uh, reactions are. Uh, obviously, people, if you want to mm. go do any of those reactions, you guys have an active uh, Discord page. You have an active Reddit channel. Um, so hop on there and uh, communicate with people, folks, because... I know sure. that uh, Mel pops on from time to time, and then obviously Ikosh and uh, Lina uh, pop on there all the time. So it's a good way of uh, communicating that way too. For sure. But I've got nothing else, Chris. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, I'm fairly accessible. <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> reply. I, I get a lot of comments, and I don't know how they find me, but I'm like uh, texting back. <laughs> this is my cell phone. Okay, you know. <laughs> oh, so get you on your G. Get you on oh, your man, cell phone. It's, right. It's, it's crazy. All right. Yeah. Wow. Well, cool. All right. Uh, enjoy the holidays there, Mel, and uh, let us know uh, when you've got anything new to tell us, especially if you're uh, coming around for any uh, pinball shows that you want to promote that you guys are, uh, if you are back into that route uh, anytime soon, we'll be happy to uh, let people know where to find you in person. Cool. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, Mel. And with that, folks, we are uh, out. We will uh, see you next time, probably... Probably doing a let's play because I don't think we're going to have anything before the new year if we uh, pop in for any of that. I mean, would you mm. say so, Jared? Yeah, I'd say that's yeah. probably right. I think All it right. might be a bit of a quiet news leading up to then. Yeah. So until then, folks, we appreciate it. Uh, enjoy the holidays. We'll talk to you all very, very soon. Bye-bye. See you later.